Hello again, it's Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in part two discussing the wonderful mask designer that was added in version 15. Now we've seen with the mask designer, we can cut our clips into any shape we want, say a heart shape. Uh, we can use the existing mask templates or bring in a different image to cut our videos with a cookie cutter into any shape we'd like. But I want to show you something very cool that I like a lot. Let's select a different clip on our timeline and move our playhead down. I love that you can create a mask on the fly right in the mask designer, including creating masks in the shape of text. And I'll show you how that works. We select a clip on our timeline, go over here to the designer function button and select mask designer. This opens up our mask designer area. And instead of using an existing uh, mask, we're going to select the option to create a mask. And that's going to open up a workspace within the workspace, the mask composer. And here we can create some custom text. We'll call this one Florida Sunset. I can position it and resize it and change the font if I wanted. But there you can see it is serving now the same function as a mask. It's a cookie cutter. My scene is taking place through the uh, letters of the text. Now I have options, of course, of working not just with text up at the top here. I can actually insert an image and create a custom mask here. But let's keep it simple here. Let's just work with text. So I click OK, and now we're back in our mask designer with our custom created mask, which in this case is simply text. And I want to create some nice animation with it. I'd like to zoom in from the distance on that text and actually zoom in so much that we enter the text and enter the scene through the text. Rather than using one of these existing motion paths, we're going to create one from scratch using keyframes. So I'm going to move the playhead here to the beginning of the clip and we'll scroll down a little bit here till we get to mask scale. And then I'm going to turn on the keyframes for that. And just because I may also have to change the position of things, I'm going to also turn on keyframing for the mask position. And you can see that creates a keyframe at the beginning of this little timeline, indicating the current settings for both scale and position. Now I'm going to change scale. We're just going to bring this down to moving the sliders all the way down to pretty much zero. So I want my mask to come zooming in from the distance here. So that's my initial keyframe. We'll go out here about uh, five seconds or so. And then I'm going to take my mask scale and just slam it all the way up. Once I've done that, I also need to change my position so we can actually enter the letters. Let's watch the animation here. We'll move the playhead back to the beginning and just play it. And here is our zoom in from the distance, right into the scene. Pretty cool. So there's a lot you can do with this very cool tool. It has some wonderful features built right into it, and it opens up uh, a great realm of possibility for creating some very cool masking effects. If you want to know more about the program, look at the tips and tutorials we got at moviepicks.com. And if you want to know everything about every tool in the program, boy, be sure and check out my book, The MoviePicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. Those are available for each version of Power Director at Amazon.com and, of course, right at the MoviePicks store. I'm Steve Brusetti. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again real soon.